Hi there, my name's Alana, and today we are going to be taking a look at my entire Charlotte Tilbury makeup collection. I have it on the counter in front of me, you have it in front of you right now, and I guarantee you that I have over a hundred products. I consider myself a Charlotte Tilbury enthusiast. I consider myself a Charlotte Tilbury connoisseur. I love her, I love her products, and I'm so excited to be talking about them with you here today. Now, a couple of disclaimers before we get into this. One, this is going to be a really long video. So, get a drink, get a snack, get a coffee, get in the bath and play this, because this is gonna be a long one, but I think there's a lot of great information here. We're gonna talk about my favorites. We're gonna talk about products that I think deserve more hype. We're gonna talk about products that I think are overrated. We're gonna talk about products where I'm just like, meh. But I have tried a lot of her products. I've tried a fair bit of her skincare, but I have tried a lot of her makeup. So this will be a very makeup heavy video. Now, if you are here and you are looking to hear about certain products or product categories, I'm gonna leave some general timestamps down below, such as blush or bronzer or lipstick, different things like that that'll give you an opportunity to really just click in if, if that's what you're here for. I'm also, in the description box below, going to leave a number of my other Charlotte Tilbury videos that I think you might enjoy. In particular, I recently did a ranking of all of my Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadow palettes and quads, um, so I'm going to leave that one below. If you like my makeup today, it's a full face of Charlotte Tilbury makeup, so I'm going to leave that below. I'm also going to leave my 5,000 subscriber giveaway where the prize is, uh, actually it's this box here, full of Charlotte Tilbury goodies. So before we get into the speed reviews, one thing I just want you to know is I love Charlotte Tilbury. And I'm saying that now because I feel like I could say that in every section. And in fact, I might. It's a bad habit of mine. I'm trying to break it. Um, but I really, I love her products. I think across the board, she's incredibly consistent. Like, look, there are some products of hers that I am not in love with. And that's okay. She has released a lot of products. But across the board, I feel like her products are good quality, they stand the test of time, they're well hyped, they deserve it, and I just think that she has some incredible formulas. The packaging is my aesthetic, the products are my vibe, everything about this, about her brand, I just love. So, darlings, let's get into it. So we're gonna kick off this collection with her lipsticks. I have 40 Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks. There is most of the collection, but they actually don't all fit in this, so yeah. Within her lipstick collection, there are two formulas. There's the Matte Revolution, which is her Demi Matte formula, which I find very flattering on the lips, well-wearing, and photographs beautifully. And then she also has her Kissing formula, which is her traditional satin formula, which again, so beautiful, feels hydrated and nourishing on the lips, and just again, looks so beautiful, especially for everyday wear. Yeah. Now her kissing formula has the traditional teardrop tip. So I could go on for a very long time about her lipsticks. Of course, she has her incredibly iconic pillow talk. Personally, I think that one is overrated. Now, maybe it's more flattering on other skin tones, but I find for me as someone very, very fair, it just pulls a little too dark and almost a touch orange, and I just don't really care for it. But fear not, I have a number of lipsticks that are in my everyday rotation, so I wanted to share those ones with you. Now, Vitch Perfect is this really beautiful, light corally pink. It just, I love it, especially in spring, summer. I think it brings a beautiful pop of warmth and pinkness to my face. Now, this one is a part of her Hot Lips 2 collection, and it's the kissing formula, although it has the matte revolution kind of sharper, more square bullet tip. And for me, JK Magic is everything that I wish Pillow Talk would be on me. And if you have a similar complexion to mine, if you're very fair, I think you're going to find JK Magic is a lot more flattering on you than Pillow Talk. JK Magic is actually the color I'm wearing today, just topped off with a little bit of lip gloss. Then we have American Sweetheart. Now this one, it breaks my heart to say, is a limited edition product. It is no longer available. And it's actually the lipstick I wore on my wedding day. It is this beautiful, corally, pink nude, just a beautiful pop of color on the lips. I love it. I'm obsessed. And uh, I will need to find a replacement for it one day because it is my favorite. Then we have Very Victoria. Victoria is my middle name. 
you'd know that if you follow me on Instagram. And this one is interesting because the formula is not as full coverage as um, as the other lipsticks. It is in the matte line, but it just, it's like a truly a My Lips But Better shade. And then finally, in my Hall of Fame, we have a new one. And if you've been around my channel for a while, you will know we love Super You. Super You was a limited edition holiday release, matte revolution. And again, it's like, it's what I want Pillow Talk to be, but Pillow Talk is not. So we have Bitch Perfect, JK Magic, Pillow Talk, American Sweetheart, Very Victoria, and Super You. Can you tell I have a thing for pinky nudes? Is that obvious? I also just want to give a shout out to So Marilyn and Red Carpet Red. Those are two of my favorite reds in her collection, as well as Karina Star, which is this really nice, almost corally red that just, again, looks stunning. Oh, and Amazing Amol. That one is a really nice berry shade. Love that one into fall. Okay, we are now into her next category of lipsticks. So first up, we have the Superstar Lips in Pillow Talk. And I love this. It is pigmented enough, but yet sheer and hydrating and juicy. And I honestly thought this was going to be so overrated. Um, but then I swatched it in store back when that was a thing. I fell in love and now I want them all. These, like, I'm just gonna put it on top. Collectively, I call these her skinny lips because the lipstick cases are really tiny, but I think this is just so beautiful and I love it. So we have Lucky Diamonds and Pillow Chalk Diamonds. You could wear them on their own, but they are both really designed to be lipstick toppers. Both of these have a lot of shimmer and sparkle to them. And so if you like that effect on your lipsticks or lip glosses or on your lips in general, then you might enjoy these. I'm not crazy about these because I don't really like sparkly lips. So this is Lucky Diamonds, which is more of a bronzy shade. Pillow Talk Diamonds is more of a true rose gold. And then this is the Superstar Lips in Pillow Talk. And as you can see, it's just a beautiful sheer gloss. So next up, we have her lip glosses. And this is another favorite category of mine. I have five of her lip lusters. Now these get a lot of criticism for being quite small. Personally, I can't remember the last time I used up a lip gloss. Now these do retail for $28, which for Charlotte Tilbury is actually a pretty affordable product. So that's also one of the reasons why I don't really mind that they're small. Also super purse friendly, super handbag friendly for an evening out. But to me, her lip glosses are just unparalleled. I like that they don't get stuck in my lips. They're not like sticky. They're just really comfortable and they can really enhance a lipstick, which is how I like to use them. So I have Red Vixen and I really enjoy putting Red Vixen, of course, on top of red lipsticks. It can create just that beautiful, classic, glossy red lip that just so fun, especially around the holidays. Uh, this one here is Unleash Me. And again, this one I can wear on top of just tons of my deeper fall berry mattes. But when it comes to the nudes, I have one true love favorite and that is Sweet Stiletto. This is my favorite Charlotte Tilbury lip gloss. I've gone through three of these. This is my third one. I use it all the time. I love having one in my purse, one at my desk. I love having them around because really for the kind of lipsticks I'm drawn to, this just pairs with everything so well. So this one, obsession. And then I have two pillow talks because I believe I got one in a mystery box and I already had one. But again, this is quite similar to Sweet Stiletto. However, Sweet Stiletto is warmer toned and more peachy and the pillow talk is a little bit more cool toned. Sweet Stiletto, Pillow Talk, Red Vixen, and Unleash Me. So next up, I have two of her latex loves. I have Belle de Soir and Video Vixen. And the best way that I can describe these are a really thick, incredibly pigmented lip gloss. And I love a glossy lip, but I just find that these kind of apply a little patchy on me. And I just, I just don't love them. So this is Belle de Soir and this is Video Vixen. Another newer to me Charlotte Tilbury product this is her Collagen Lip Bath in Refresh Rose. A lot of people really like this product. I don't like plumping lip glosses. I don't like plumping lip products. I don't like products that smell minty, and this does all those things. I don't like the tingle on my lips. That being said, 
this has a nice peachiness to it. I've worn it a few times and the doe foot is really interesting because it has like a little bit of a divot, it's almost a heart shape in it. And so you almost feel like it's like plumping your lips as you apply it, which is pretty neat. Like you can tell there's a lot of thought behind the product. It's just not the kind of product where I appreciate the thought on. Next up, we have her matte liquid lipsticks, otherwise known as her Hollywood lip line. And I have platinum blonde here. And I have to say, this may have been the first Charlotte Tilbury product category to disappoint me. Now I should say, I don't like matte liquid lips on a good day. I find them uncomfortable and I find them very drying and I just don't like them on my face to be quite honest. When these released, I went to Holt Renfrew on Bloor and I was so excited. Those were back in the old days when you could swatch things and they had like, you know, sanitary testers I could try. And I was so excited because that was sort of when my Charlotte Tilbury obsession was really starting to develop. And I was just convinced if Charlotte released it, I had to love it. And I tried all of the nudie pinks and none of them looked that great on me. And I find I have a face that flatters a lot of makeup and I have a complexion that flatters a lot of makeup. Like it takes a lot for it not to be good. But I just found they pulled, generally speaking, too dark for my taste or too warm. So I tried Platinum Blonde, I tried Pin Up Pink. I really wanted to like Pin Up Pink. I tried Rising Star. I just, I, I even tried the reds. I like a matte red. I just didn't really like any of them on me. I didn't find them particularly comfortable. So I took a pass on these. However, I got this one in a mystery box. So like, I'm not complaining. It's nice to have it, but. So next up we have a product that I skipped, but I later received it in PR and I actually fell in love. And that is Charlotte Tilbury's Jewel Lip in Pillow Talk. Now the reason I skipped this is because, I mean, so it has like a really sparkly cap, but the product has a sparkle in it. And as I've already said in this video, in the lip section, I don't like sparkly lip products. I just don't, I just prefer not to have the sparkle. I like a little bit of luminescence, I don't like sparkle. And when I looked at these, they looked like it'd be really sparkly, but actually on the lips, it's luminescent. So I just applied it and it really enhances any of her nudie pink lipsticks. Again, you can wear it on its own, but I've been really loving this. I actually, I love pairing this and wearing it on top of my Hermes lipstick. Like it, I just really like this and I was not expecting to. This retails for $36. It is a very thick, sturdy package. So now we have her lip liners. And of course we have to start with the lip liner that started it all. It started a revolution. It started an obsession for so many people, Pillow Talk. I really like Pillow Talk. It pulls a little pinker on me. Now I'd have to say that the Pillow Talk lip liner is actually why I was so disappointed in the Pillow Talk lipstick. I remember, and you can even check my blog post from whenever this lipstick came out, that I was expecting it with the lip liner to be a little bit more pinky. And with the lipstick, it just kind of let me down because it pulled so brown. And so I've never been obsessed with the Pillow Talk lipstick. I like it. I like others more. And just like the Pillow Talk lip liner, I like some of her other lip liners more. So I also have Pillow Talk 2 Medium, which is really cool because she actually, she took her line, um, I want to say it was earlier this, I want to say it was earlier last year, she took the line and she expanded Pillow Talk to have Pillow Talk 2, which is Medium, and Pillow Talk 3 Intense as well as just a whole bunch of other Pillow Talk branded products, which I just think is so fun. Then we have Iconic Nude, which is actually my favorite of the Charlotte Tilbury lip liners. And oddly enough for me, it's the one that pulls the most brown. And then for red, we have Savage Rose, and I use this with all of my red Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks. So we have Pillow Talk, Pillow Talk 2, Iconic Nude, and Savage Rose. And that concludes all of my Charlotte Tilbury lip products. So let's move on to eyes and we're gonna start with mascaras. So I have all three Charlotte Tilbury mascaras and I'm gonna just flat out say it, Full Fat Lashes is garbage. It is trash. I literally only still have it so I can reference in videos how garbagey it is. It is flaky, but it's worse than just flaky because flaky would be that something came onto your eyes. No, no, no. It is flaky and nothing shows up on your eyes. It is literally terrible. So, um, bye. Don't even, don't touch it, don't try it, don't buy it. If someone offers it for you for free, run away. Now, we have Legendary Lashes Volume 2. 
And this mascara is one of my favorite everyday mascaras. Once this one is done, I would totally repurchase. I'm not allowed to repurchase it until I finish up all the mascaras I have, but I would totally repurchase it. I love this one because, and it's actually my favorite Charlotte Tilbury mascara. It gives just like a nice, fluffy, voluminous, defined, like wide-eyed look. And it's just fantastic. It is just fantastic. It has a softer, more bristly kind of brush, which I prefer. And just, just a really, really big brush with a slight bend to it. Fantastic mascara. 10 out of 10, obsessed. Now her newest mascara is shockingly called Pillow Talk. Seriously, a Charlotte Tilbury product called Pillow Talk. What is the world we live in? So this is the Pillow Talk Push Up Lashes. Comes in a baby pink thing, has a rose gold top. And here's what I'll say about this one. I don't love the wand. I appreciate the functionality of the wand, but I don't like plastic wands. It has a flat side that you sort of use to paint the product on your lash. And then it has some tiny little combs that you use to jiggle and wiggle it through. This is actually the mascara I'm wearing today. And it looks incredible on camera. It, I think it looks beautiful on camera. However, I find up close and in person, it looks a little spidery, a little clumpy. So it definitely gives you a lot of volume. It gives you like a bit of length, I'd say, but it really does open up your eyes. I just, I don't love that kind of wet, clumpy type formula. I much prefer Legendary Lashes Volume 2, and that is the one I would recommend, especially for every day, and especially if you're not going somewhere super glam. Continuing on the eye stick train, let's talk about eyeliners. So first up, we have the Classic, which is what I'm wearing today, and it is a powder liner, and it's absolutely incredible for tight lining. If you enjoy tight lining your eyes and you enjoy that look, and you should, it's my favorite. It is one of my little secrets for fantastic eye makeup every single time. And you're gonna love this product. It just blends so wonderfully into the waterline and stays put and is just, just fantastic. I didn't think that I would love a powdered eye pencil, but I can't live without it. Next up we have the Rock and Coal, and I have it in the shade Verushka Mink. So this is very nice. It's like kind of like a it's like a very deep espresso brown but with a gray to it. It's not quite black, it's a little bit softer. And I do like to use this one for tight lining as well, but not as much as the classic. A recent addition, this launched with her flawless filter line. I picked up the double-ended eyeliner. So on one end, we have a matte black, and on the other end, we have sort of a champagne pearl. Now, the idea with the champagne pearl is you put it on your lower lash line to really open up your eyes. I'm fortunate to have very large eyes, but you know, we can all use a little help. So I enjoy it, um, but I find I definitely reach for the black end a lot more. And then finally, in eyeliner world, we have the Feline Flick. Now, I don't really like this product. One, it is a felt tip liner, and I don't care for felt tip liners. I much prefer the brush. I always use my Tom Ford eye defining pen. That's my favorite. It's my holy grail. I'm obsessed. I love that as a brush. I don't like that this is a felt tip. I just find it harder to manipulate and harder to work with. Now, I will say I am aware that they did last year update their feline flick formula. Um, so I haven't tried it since then. One, I can't really go into store and do that because COVID. And two, I just didn't really like this one and I'm just not interested really in trying it. I mean, if it showed up through PR, I would definitely give it a chance. But if it's something you have to spend my own money on, I'm just not interested because for me, I am obsessed with winged liner. It's a part of my signature everyday look. And it took me a long time to find the Tom Ford pen. And now that I found the Tom Ford pen, I have zero interest in trying anything else. I think everything else is inferior. So this is the classic, which is the powder eyeliner. Then we have Verushka Mink, which is rock and coal. We then have the double-ended black and champagne eyeliner. And then we have Feline Flick. So now we're on to my Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadow palettes and quads. I have 22 Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadow palettes and quads. And I very recently posted a video that was ranking all of them, including eye swatches, including arm swatches, my thoughts. I So definitely go check that out if you wanna get more in depth on my thoughts on her eyeshadow. 
for the sake of brevity in this video, I'm going to just give you some highlights. So we're going to start off with her Instant Eye Palettes. These are 95 Canadian dollars in any one of them. Let's use Pillow Talk as our example. You get 12 shadows, which are four sets of three. And each look has a name. So we have Day, Desk, Date, and Dream in this particular palette. Um, this one is always available. It's quite nice. My favorite one that they've ever released is last year's Holiday Palette, which is so, so pretty. And then this year's Holiday Palette is also quite nice. I think if you're new to Charlotte, you're going to enjoy these. If you like a more pigmented eyeshadow formula, you're also going to really enjoy these. Now at $72, we have her easy, generally speaking, easy eye palettes. These palettes, again, 72 Canadian dollars. They have six shadows each. This one is from their holiday collection, the Super Nudes. If you like a smoky eye, this palette is fantastic. It's predominantly matte, although a few of the shadows do have a little bit of a shimmer to them. I also have uh, Easy Smoky Eye Palette and Charlotte Darling, which as far as I'm concerned are the same palette and nobody can tell me otherwise. Like seriously, when we say Charlotte dupes herself, like, I mean it. These are the same. And I have 16 Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadow quads. These are $66 each. I'm just going to highlight five of her eyeshadow palettes that I particularly love. First up, we have Fire Rose, which unfortunately was limited edition. It's now sold out in North America, but apparently at the time of filming was still available in England. Anyways, beautiful, fantastic palette. I have a whole video on this palette, which I'm going to leave in the description box, but love this one. The pigment, incredible. The pop, the super pop shadow in that, next level. Next up, we have Exaggerize, which you will want to check out my Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadow palette ranking video because I am giving away one of these palettes. And I love this one. The pictures on the website look nothing like the palette. It looks so pink on the website. And in person, it is just not. It's actually the palette I'm wearing today. And it is one of my go-tos if I want a beautiful, effortless, like glam, but appropriate for every day, just stunning look. Again, this, this shadow is like lingerie for the eyes. It just lifts and enhances. And I just, I am obsessed. If you're looking for something more smoldery and sexy, definitely check out Queen of Glow. Again, this formula is absolutely incredible. It has just the incredible gold and purples. The colors just dance and blend together so beautifully. If you are looking for a stunning everyday palette, I can't recommend the Bella Sophia, which was formerly known as Dulce Vita Enough. Seriously, this palette is incredible. It, every time I wear it, it is that perfect combination of appropriate for everyday, yet sexy and smoldery. And then one of my newest Charlotte Tilbury palettes that I'm obsessed with is the Hollywood Flawless Eye Filter Luxury Palette in Star Aura. This is so beautiful, truly again, lingerie for the eyes. It enhances, it opens your eyes up. It has this incredible pearly formula that is so lightweight, it feels like nothing on the eyes. The colors blend together, and I know on the palette it doesn't look like much, but if you have a similar complexion to me, you are just going to find that it just provides a subtle definition that is so beautiful both on camera, if you're a YouTuber, but more importantly in person and in real life. And I think it is so important that we talk about makeup that's beautiful in real life and not just makeup that looks great on camera. I'm obsessed with this. I've encouraged many of my followers and subscribers to purchase this and everyone who has purchased either this or Diva Lights has been really happy. So if you want to see my full thoughts on my Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadow collection, definitely check out the ranking video. We have swatches, we have eye try-ons. It's a really in-depth video and I think you're going to find it really helpful. Continuing on the eye train, we are now heading in to one of my favorite Charlotte Tilbury product categories. That is the Eyes to Mesmerize. Now, I love the Eyes to Mesmerize because it is my all-time favorite cream shadow formula. What I love to do is just take these, dip my finger in them, and then just blend them out all over my eyes. And I use them either one, as a shadow base, or two, just one and done, that's the look. It provides this beautiful shimmer to the eyes. It comes in a range of colors, but I just really like to sheer them out like watercolor and wear just the one color just everywhere. My all-time favorite is Jean, which is now known as Champagne. And I love wearing that one either on its own or 
putting a little bit of bronzer in the crease and just that's the look. That is what the pot looks like and this one I've been using for a while. It comes in a fairly deep, it's fairly generous, it's a fairly deep um, frosted glass case with a plastic screw-on lid and I screw these on really tight. I've had a lot of these for a long time. Like I want to say I probably, I mean you see Charlotte's name is like rubbing off here. I probably had this one for two or three years and it is not dried out which I think speaks well to both the product and the packaging and is something important to me when we look at products like this. So while I'm obsessed with Jean, and that is really the product that started my obsession with the entire Eyes to Mesmerize collection, I do not love rose gold. I find every time I wear rose gold, it makes my eyes look sickly and puffy. It is awful, which breaks my heart because I love rose gold as a color. I love rose gold in makeup. I love rose gold from Charlotte Tilbury. But there's just something about the rose gold in the Eyes to Mesmerize that with me and my complexion just makes my eyes look puffy and sick. So we have Jean, Rose Gold, Star Gold, Sunset Rose, Golden Sunrise, Golden Eclipse, Marie Antoinette, and the Pillow Talk Jewel Pop, which we're gonna talk about momentarily. Charlotte did do a rename of her products but Jean is now called Champagne and Marie Antoinette is now called Oyster Pearl. Both of these are in the permanent collection and are always available. Although I did have a moment when I saw that Jean was disappearing where I was brokenhearted because I literally couldn't live without this and I knew this product forever, but it's just been renamed to Champagne. Sunset Rose and Copper Sunrise were both released along with Fire Rose. They are limited edition, but they're still available. Star Gold and Rose Gold are also in the permanent collection, but are listed as limited availability right now. But I don't believe that they'll be disappearing. And Golden Eclipse is an exclusive shade only available at Nordstrom during the Nordstrom annual sale earlier this year. And by earlier this year, I mean it's January 2021, so it was the fall 2020 sale. Now the Pillow Talk Jewel Pop is so beautiful. It's a product that I skipped for the longest time, but I gave in. I purchased it a month or two after it came out and I'm obsessed. I use this, typically what I'll do is I will do a Pillow Talk colored eyeshadow look. So something in the warm, pinky, shimmery kind of family, rose gold. And then instead of using the pop shade that's available in the palette, I will swipe my finger in this and use this as the pop shade. And this is game changing. It is so shimmery, it is so beautiful. You're not gonna wanna lose the little stopper because it could dry out, but it's just a pinky gold, rose gold, dusty rose kind of shade. And just when you use your finger, just tap and blend it in on your lid. Incredible. I did not want to love this product, but I do. And I'm going to wrap up our eyes section with a product that's gonna transition us from eyes into face. And that is the instant look in a palette. So I'm gonna start off with Stoned Rose Palette. Now I do have a full video on this look, so definitely check that out. This is a really pretty neutral coral look. The shades blend together effortlessly. And I love these five minute face palettes because you get three eyeshadows, two blushes, so just like her cheek to cheek blushes that have the two shades and a bronzer and a highlighter, which really reminds me of her Hollywood bronze and glow. So if you have a similar complexion to me, I think you're gonna find this incredibly flattering, so easy to use, and I just love that for this palette, not only is it so travel friendly, if you're traveling, it's really convenient to just bring this. This would also be great to keep in your desk if you're still going to work, which I'm also not doing, but I would totally keep a product like this at my desk at work if I was ever going to work full time in an office, which who knows? Um, <laughs> But it really makes picking your blush, bronzer, highlighter combination with your eyeshadow easy, effortless, and just something that goes together so nicely. So this is Stoned Rose. These are the eyeshadows, the bronzer, the highlighter, and the two blushes. And one color combination that I think I like possibly slightly more is the Instant Look in a Palette Gorgeous Glowing Beauty. This one is also still available, and each of these retail for $85. And when you really think about it, yes, $85 is a lot of money and I'm not going to pretend otherwise. However, when you consider that you're basically getting something kind of comparable to 
um, Hollywood Bronze and Glow and a blush and three eyeshadows it's an incredible value so this one I love this one creates a little bit more of a smoldery pinky plum look which again I love the last time I wore this on camera got tons of compliments you guys were asking what I'm wearing this shadow in particular I love it love 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 so this is gorgeous glowing beauty you have the eyeshadows the bronzer the highlighter and the blush one thing I would love to see Charlotte do is release more face palettes like this but do a whole range like a fair a medium a dark and a deep or something like that I'd love to see kind of in the way that she has the four different shades of bronzer I'd love it if she sort of used that as a stepping stone to create an instant look in a palette for every complexion because these are incredible the formulas are fantastic and they're so useful and I would just love it if more people were able to enjoy them as much as I do Okay, so we are now in the wonderful world of complexion products. So I'm going to kick it off with two products that I would broadly describe as primers. First up we have Wonder Glow, which is an instant soft focus beauty flash. I like to wear this either under the Magic Foundation or under the Light Wonder Foundation. This, as a primer, reminds me a lot of the Hollywood Flawless Filter, which we will get to, but just more sheer less intense and if you're doing a lighter coverage foundation personally I don't want too much shimmer coming through I think this is a beautiful primer I really really enjoy it the other thing that's really cool about it is it has like a squeezy tube it's really firm and sturdy but I like it because it's easy for me to control how much product I'm getting out and then we have the Hollywood Flawless Filter. This has recently experienced an expansion of their shades. I discussed that more in my video that I'm gonna leave down below that talks about the extended shade range and the Hollywood Flawless Filter eyeshadows. So this one's really neat because it comes in a really sturdy glass bottle and then it has a sturdy, thick, big doe foot. There are a number of ways that you can use this product, but it really brings a candlelight glow to the skin. So in every day, I don't like doing this when I'm filming for YouTube because it makes my skin just look shiny, but for everyday wear, it looks beautiful in person. I just don't love it photographed. Um, I will literally use this all over my face as a primer. Um, today when I use this, I really just focused on where I'd want to highlight, kind of the high points of my cheek, and then I built my complexion on top of that. Another way you can use this that I really enjoy is mixing this in with foundation. And in particular, I love mixing it in with the flawless foundation because I find that one um, it's matte but not flat but this just adds a luminosity to it that brings it to the next level so this is Wonder Glow blended in versus the Hollywood flawless filter and I'm just gonna blend that in for you on camera this one has a little bit more of a pearlescent sheen to it it is just more noticeable compared to Wonder Glow now what's really neat about Wonder Glow, because I very much consider this a primer, it's actually listed as skincare on her website. So on the back it says, turn around tired, dull skin in a beauty flash, powered by a fluorescent core that converts UV light into skin luminosity for an instant soft focus spotlight effect. Can be used under, over, or instead of foundation. My preference is to use it under. I also like to use Flawless Filter as my highlighter and I'll blend it in along the high points of my cheek after foundation. Either of these products are going to give you a beautiful glow. Okay, so now we're going to get into foundations. So first up we have the Unisex Healthy Glow. Now this product is again listed as skincare. I use it as a foundation. So this is the, this is her all year hydrating summer tint moisturizer and it is so cool. So I just put a little dab of it on my skin right there and as we blend it in, oh man, the color changes. And I realize that looks quite dark on me, but if we kept on blending it, and I blend it all over my face, it just looks like I have a beautiful, healthy tan. We are taking a break from our regularly scheduled programming to say hi to Winston. Winston was just outside the door scream oh you don't want to be in my Charlotte video too bad he was outside okay 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 Winston he is such a funny cat so he's outside the door screaming to let him in which usually when he's screaming like that he wants to be held and cuddled so I bring him in I interrupt my filming to hug and cuddle him and he's just like no thanks 
Anyways, so back to the healthy glow foundation. Winston is now hanging out under my tripod. It definitely smells like summer and sunscreen. And this is what it says on the back. Apply on its own or on top of your daily facial moisturizer for a natural healthy glow. Warning, this product does not contain a sunscreen and does not protect against sunburn. Repeated exposure of unprotected skin while tanning will increase uh, the risk of skin aging, skin cancer, and other harmful effects to the skin, even if you do not burn. First of all, thank you for that product warning. But it does smell like sunscreen. And what I like, especially in the summer when I've already got a bit of a healthy glow going on, I will just use that um, in addition to my moisturizer, but I will use that as my foundation. Just add a touch of cream blush, a touch of bronzer, and just a really sheared out, you know, using Jean or Champagne from the Eyes to Mesmerize for just a beautiful, healthy summer glow. This was actually introduced to me by my friend Melissa when we were on our friend Claire's Bachelorette. Well, I guess they're friends. Melissa's now Claire's sister-in-law, so they are friends, but she was there as the future sister-in-law. I was there as a friend. We were both bridesmaids. And this was introduced to me by Melissa, and she let me try hers. Uh, we were in Montreal in the summer, and I couldn't believe how beautiful it looked. This product deserves more hype. I think it is often forgotten about, often ignored, and this is just a staple in my summer routine, especially on those days where I'm not filming, I'm not being photographed, and I just want a beautiful, everyday, luminous look. Moving up the coverage train, we now have Light Wonder, which is Charlotte's light coverage foundation. I have shade 2 Fair, and this one says, for a daily luminous tint, blend a small amount onto your skin from the nose outwards. For a more flawless glowing finish, pat onto the top of areas where extra coverage is needed using a brush. So I totally disregard all of that. I just apply this like a tinted moisturizer or a very light coverage foundation, either using my fingers or a brush, and I love it. This is one of my everyday products. It just covers the skin beautifully. It masks imperfections, but it doesn't mask your face. And that's what I love about this one. I would maybe even say that this is my favorite Charlotte Tilbury foundation. Although for me, it's just different than the other two that we're going to talk about because it is light coverage. Next up, we have a product that holds a very special place in my heart. And this is the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Foundation. And shockingly, I have it in shade two, fair. If there's one thing I appreciate about Charlotte, it's pretty consistent across her foundation lines in terms of what color you are. So I love this one, but this one hasn't been getting a lot of hype lately ever since Airbrush Flawless came along. Now, this foundation I think is a beautiful medium coverage everyday foundation. It looks nice filming, but in everyday, it's just a fantastic option. Makeup wears beautifully over it, long lasting coverage, comfortable on the skin, and this was actually one of the products that really introduced me to Charlotte. So now we have the Airbrush Flawless Foundation, which shockingly I am also in shade two fair. Again, a frosted glass bottle, rose gold on top, just a beautiful foundation. I find this one is matte, but not flat, definitely full coverage. I don't reach for it typically day to day. I tend to reach for it more when I'm filming because it comes across so beautifully in photography and on camera. So this would be a great foundation. If you are looking for something to wear to a wedding, maybe you're the bride, maybe it's COVID times and you're doing your own makeup and having a small ceremony, couldn't recommend this enough. This is also great if you're gonna be photographed, maybe for your engagement photos or maternity shoot, or you're going to a friend's wedding or you're a bridesmaid, like any special occasion where you are gonna be photographed, this is the foundation I'm wearing today. And as you can see, it just looks fantastic on camera. Um, but I do find in person, it's a bit heavy, it's a lot. It really does give you a perfected looking face, which is great, but in my day-to-day -day life, I'm not so much looking for that level of perfection as much as I'm just looking for healthy, luminous, beautiful looking skin. So I prefer to go a step down for coverage for day-to-day. -day. The other thing I love day-to-day -day if I am using this foundation, but I don't love as much in photos, is taking this and actually mixing it with my flawless filter. I'll use a pump and a half of this, and then whatever comes out on one um, pull of the doe foot sort of rolled across my hand, I'll mix that in together. Beautiful glowing skin, but I find on camera it makes me look kind of oily. But if in person, beautiful, dewy, fantastic look. So this is Light Wonder, and again, this is all shade two magic and flawless and you can see just the coverage difference and even the slight shade difference although once they're all on my face they all look great 
Now let's talk concealer. So this is the Magic Away Liquid Concealer, and I really like this one. However, I've got two things to tell you. First of all, um, you can see how much product you have left as you twist this up, and I am right at the top, so I don't have too much product left. But I've had this one for a while, that's why it looks kind of nasty. And on top, it had a puff, just like the Maybelline um, Age Rewind Concealer that's so iconic, it had the puff. And I was literally doing this makeup look and applying it, and the puff broke because I have used this too much. So if you get to the end of this, your puff will break. I'm pretty excited actually to use up a concealer. It takes a lot of work for me. I really enjoyed it. My one complaint is the cap it can be really tough to remove, and that's just me putting on lightly. So just FYI, I really like this. Again, I'm wearing it today, and I am gonna leave link down below the entire tutorial for this full face of Charlotte Tilbury makeup, but I'm wearing it under my eyes, here, eye base, I'm just, I'm wearing it a lot. I really like it, and I do intend on repurchasing it once I finish. And our final base complexion before we head into the blush, bronzers, and highlights of the world is the Airbrush Flawless Finish. This powder is incredible. Again, I'm wearing it today under my eyes, and it's a little bit of a set sort of underneath where my bronzer went, and really anywhere that I thought could show some shine. I love this. I don't bake with it. I'm not into baking, but I do set my foundation and just really work it in, especially if I'm filming or again, any event where I might be photographed. This is a beautiful, beautiful product. It is iconic. I love it and I would definitely continue to repurchase once I do hit pan. Okay, we are getting to time for some lipstick reapplication. Let's go in with Glowing Gen. This is again a beautiful rosy neutral that could totally use more hype. Okay, on to bronzer. Now this is the Airbrush Bronzer in shade 1 Fair, and I have hit pan on it. And this is a massive pan that I, I hit pan on, and that's like a toony size, like I, I'm impressed. So I love this product. When it was first released, I was like, you know what, I don't need it. I have the Hollywood Bronze and Glow, that's all I need. I don't need this bronzer. But I eventually gave into the hype, and I bought it because Charlotte knows how to sell things to me. You put it in gold packaging and you say it's flawless, gorgeous, darling, radiant, celebrity, Hollywood. You just put all that together and I'm like, oh my God, I do need to look like a glowing Hollywood goddess, gem, actress, whatever. So I eventually gave in and I bought it. And this thing is massive. Like compare that to my face. This thing is massive and beautiful. So I bought it in shade one and I was worried that it would be too light on me as I was applying it. Which, when you're as fair as me, to be worried that a bronzer is too light on you, like that is a weird feeling. Um, but I bought it, I applied it, and at first I was kind of on the fence, but as I used it more and more, I realized it just adds this beautiful warmth to the skin. The kind of idea is that this adds that Mediterranean glow, like you were just down in Ibiza for the weekend. You know, we live in London and we hop down and we traveled to Spain for the weekend. And it just adds this beautiful, beautiful glow. I love just working especially into my hairline, on my cheeks. This is obviously a product I reach for nearly every day and I love. And the other really cool thing about this product is it has a great sustainability element to it, which is when I'm done this pan, which is definitely gonna happen uh, when you consider the size of that pan and just, you can't really see the depth of the dent, but there's a dent in there. I can just pop this out using the little hole on the back and buy just the pan instead of repurchasing the whole compact. So the compact is beautiful and it will get many years of use because I can just refill it. If you are still watching this video, please subscribe. This video has been so much effort to film. I am so exhausted. I've ordered Indian food, it's on the way and I can't wait to eat it. So this is one of my all time favorite Charlotte Tilbury products. This is the Filmstar Bronze and Glow. Daily essential, I've converted so many of my friends to using this. Uh, this is my third now I have one that was last year's holiday collection that I just can't locate. But this is the third one I've had. I hit pan on the other one. Um, obsession, literal obsession. Uh, look at the size of those pans. That highlighter, I'm obsessed. I'll sometimes use this highlighter even if I'm not using the bronzer. Uh, this is a beautiful product and if you have a complexion similar to mine, you're going to love it. I'm wearing it today as my contour, bronzer, and my highlight. And what I love about this shade, this is the palette that killed contouring for me. 
I used to have like the ABH palette, if I still have it, but I used to use it and contour like, mm, like contour hard. Once I got this, I would just use this with my Too Faced Mr. Right brush, just a big fluffy dome shaped brush. And I would just use it to build in that definition right in here. And that would be it. That's it. No contouring. This is what I use all the time. I'm obsessed. I can't say enough good things about this product. You need it in your collection and it looks gorgeous. Ah, my dinner arrived. I'm gonna go eat dinner and then I'm gonna finish filming. I had a dinner break. I'm feeling great. You saw the clip. Okay, back to the Hollywood film star Bronze and Glow. This is a mini product, half the price, $40, and it was available as a part of this year's holiday collection, which is super cool. And I bought it, even though I have a whole bunch of the full size, because I had to have it, because it was tiny and adorable. And I thought it'd be great to have for travel. Noticing a theme here. Anyways, beautiful, and if you are interested in the product, but aren't sure if this is for you, I think this is a great way to try it without spending nearly $100. Next up, we have the Glowgasm Face Palette. I believe this was released last summer, or the summer before, it was definitely a summer launch. And I mean, look at that beautiful sort of Coachella tie-dye front. I mean, it's like not like anything else Charlotte's done. I, it's kind of weird, but this is beautiful. I love using it as a highlighting palette. I don't really reach the bronzer. The powders remind me a lot of the new pearlescent Hollywood filter eyeshadow palettes. Now again, I don't care for the bronzer, but my favorite way to use the highlighters is to just take my brush and just swish it through all of them and just blend them all together and put them on my face. I think it's just such a pretty way to use it. So this is Filmstar Bronze and Glow, the bronzer and the highlighter, my holy grail, my ride or die, the love of my life. This is the Glowgasm face palette. We have the gold, the copper, the pink, and the patchy terrible bronzer. Okay, next up, and you could consider these, well, at least this one, to be a blush light, but these are the three Hollywood Beauty Light Wands. I have a Goldgasm, Spotlight and Pillow Talk. I, a Pillow Talk product, huh, who would have guessed? The way these work is they have a sponge top and they have a little off on twist. So you wanna make sure you twist it to off, otherwise you risk losing product. A lot of people complain that there's not a lot of product in these, um, but I've never got through one and I use them semi-frequently. Look, I, it's a really nice product. I, just sharing what others complain. I don't really see it. So I'm gonna swatch the three of them for you. And I'm gonna take a really quick break to reapply some lipstick, again, going with Glowing Gem. We have Goldgasm, Spotlight, and Pillow Talk. And let's just rub those out a bit more so you can see what they look like more sheer. Personally, my favorite is Spotlight if I'm looking for a highlighter. Although I do also like Pillow Talk, but more as a blush or a blush topper. I don't really love Goldgasm. I just think it's too dark and too much for me. I think this would be more flattering on a deeper complexion. Transitioning in the cream world, we have a discontinued product. This is super pretty. This was the Seduce blush, the Pretty Youth Glow filter. It has a highlighter and a blush, and it actually came with a brush that is deep somewhere in my collection. But it was really cool because you would just kind of take the brush and it was a very soft, powdery cream product. And there you go. And together, the, the way the brush was set up is it had a bevel to it. So you would have the highlight applied generally where the highlighter was supposed to go and the blush applied underneath it. So it was really pretty. I really enjoyed this in the summer, but this product line was either limited edition or has been discontinued. Okay, so let's talk about her powdered blushes. You may wonder, do I like these? To which I would say, duh. So I have six of them. So I'm gonna start with my all-time favorite, which is First Love. This is the blush I'm wearing today, and it's very reminiscent of Tarte Exposed. It's the kind of product that really doesn't look like much in the pan, but on the face, for me, it just sculpts but adds that blush just so beautifully. It's one of my all-time favorite blushes. Um, I used it a lot, and I still haven't hit pan on it, so these things are incredible value. Um, but if I ever did finish it, or lose it, or break it, I would replace it without even a second thought. Another one that I really like is Pillow Talk. So this one's neat because instead of having um, two blushes, to me, this is more of a blush and a highlighter. And then we have Ecstasy, which is really pretty if I'm looking for something peachy. Pillow Talk is a little bit more neutral, but also more pink. 
than First Love, whereas Ecstasy is a peach. And these three really are my favorites. Now I did video this look, this is a full face of Charlotte Tilbury makeup, and I show you how I like to use the blush pops. But essentially you use the outer rim to do sort of your whole cheek, and then you use the center to do a pop on your apples. The other three blushes I have are Sex on Fire, Pillow Talk Intense, and Walk of No Shame which was originally named Walk of Shame, but was renamed earlier this year. And by this year, I mean in 2020, because it is 2021, but it just feels like one never ending pandemic. So we have First Love, Pillow Talk, Ecstasy, Sex on Fire, Pillow Talk Intense, and Walk of No Shame, which my bracelet's a little in the way, but the last swatch is there and I added it also there. Okay, and now we are on to skincare. So we're gonna kick it off with her absolutely iconic magic cream. Now, I have received magic cream a number of times in her mystery boxes, so I have two. And I like it, but I don't love it. And there's a couple of reasons for that. First of all, what I like about it, it's incredibly thick, which is fantastic in fall and winter when it's more dry here, especially in Toronto, Canada, where I live. It's hydrating and it wears incredibly beautiful under makeup today, and it's the moisturizer I'm wearing today. What I don't like about it is it's incredibly thick. So in spring, summer, when it's or early fall, when it's hot and sweaty, it really feels too heavy on the skin. Now, to combat that problem, which I think a lot of people are having, and I can't even imagine for people who live in warmer climates, she introduced Magic Cream Light. I've had the chance to try Magic Cream Light as a sample through my purchases on Charlotte's website. I've sampled it a couple of times, and I really like it. I like it a lot better than the original Magic Cream, to be honest. Again, wears beautifully under makeup, but it's just so much more comfortable on the skin. You're not giving up the hydration, you're just giving up the thickness. So I don't really like skincare, from makeup brands. I think that I wanna buy my skincare from brands that are skincare first, and I wanna buy my makeup from brands that are makeup first. When a skincare brand has makeup, I don't think it's that great. When a makeup brand has skincare, I don't think it's that great, I just don't trust it as much. I know a lot of people love Charlotte's skincare. This is just my position. I generally like the things I've tried, but I'm just not as obsessed with them as I am with my skincare brand skincare products. So I, I just don't like mixing the two. But I like this, this is good, Magic Cream Light, it's good. Now in terms of Magic Cream Night, I really hate this product. And that is because, first of all, it smells nice, but it feels thick like honey. And when I'm putting it on my skin, it feels so sticky. And I like I follow the instructions, I, you know, I pat it in and I do all that stuff. But it just, when I wake up in the morning, it still feels like I have a mask of products on. And I normally don't mind that. I actually sleep in a lot of night oils, but I just find this one is just sticky and it kind of irritates my skin. So I don't particularly like it. Eye cream, I have sampled, it's fine. I have yet to find an eye cream where I'm like, oh my God, this changes my eyes. But I'm kind of hoping if I keep using eye creams in general that in 10 or 20 years, I'll look better than I would have otherwise. I don't know, eye creams are tough. She's also released a magic serum, which I've sampled and I like it. I don't love it, like I wouldn't buy it, but if it ended up in like a mystery box, I'd use it. That's kind of my position on a lot of her skincare. I don't think any of it's bad or harmful, it's just not my favorite. Now this is a product that I've sort of cheated with. <laughs> so this is the Goddess Cleansing Ritual. It's a two part, it has a sort of like an oil, which smells really citrusy and beautiful, and then it has a charcoal scrub, I believe. Yes, a purifying bamboo charcoal miracle spa duo. So, nearly every time I order from Charlotte, I choose this as my free sample. And overall, I really like it. I love the orangey, citrusy scent of the balm. I love the scrub. I love how they work together. I don't, they do get some criticism that the duo can't be purchased separately. This is another product where if it came in a mystery box, I'd be really happy and I would use it and enjoy it. But I just can't really justify purchasing it because I just, I just, I probably wouldn't purchase it because I have a number of cleansing balms that work just fine for me. And so this is sort of like a fun treat to use as a free sample. Next up, I have the Brightening Youth Glow. This is an anti-aging color correcting glow booster. And I will say this is nice. I don't know, does it color correct a glow boost? It glow boosts, I, the correcting, I don't really, I couldn't really tell you, I don't really know, but I use it, I like it, it looks good on my skin. 
don't use it consistently, which maybe if I used it more consistently, you'd get to that, but I just don't. Now I have the Goddess Clay Mask, and I'm pretty sure it's in my bathroom, but I really like that one. I like to use it sort of once or twice a month, really focusing on my nose, but it's really, it's nice all over my face. Um, I find for a clay mask, it's not drying, which is really nice for me because I have dry skin. It's very comfortable, and that's a product I wanted for a long time, and I luckily did receive it in a mystery box one time. Probably my favorite skincare product from her is the Instant Magical Facial Dry Sheet Mask. These are really cool because one, you can use it three times. Two, when you put it on, it has like a double ear piece. Um, I actually used it today and it was a part of my getting ready with this look. So I like to just massage it in and really warm up the oils in the mask. And it just leaves my skin radiant. And I'm, after using this one today, I hadn't used it in a while. I am seriously considering purchasing the box of four of them for like $100. So the leftover random products. We have the powder and sculpt brush. Now this is a mini, but she does have the brush with a long handle available for purchase. This uh, typically comes for free with the Hollywood Bronze and Glow, um, which is available at the holidays with the limited edition. This is incredible. I do use this to sort of contour, but I really like to use it for highlight and for blush. This is a beautiful little pointed brush and I'm obsessed. I love it. And this one, because it's tiny, is so good for travel. So now we have the Scent of a Dream perfume. And this perfume is nice. Let's put a quick spritz. It has kind of a sexy, but yet appropriate for everyday type of smell. It's not too much. It really, when you're wearing it, just kind of wafts through the air. I love the bottle. It just feels like Aladdin and like Princess Jasmine. I feel like Princess Jasmine would have this. So beautiful, beautiful perfume. I actually received this for free as a gift with purchase last holiday, which is fantastic. It looks so beautiful in my vanity and I do enjoy wearing it. Sometimes I'll spritz it on for every day. I don't think this is a must have, but I do think it's a nice to have. And that is all of my Charlotte Tilbury products. I think I've been filming for two hours. So my gosh, I hope this video isn't over an hour, but that's very possible. But thank you so much for watching. If you can't tell, I'm a huge Charlotte Tilbury fan and a Charlotte fanatic, and I love justifying that obsession with my YouTube channel. So please consider subscribing. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I am exhausted from filming, so I am going to just go and relax. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Mwah.